Hello folks, this is Mike. Welcome to my shop. Today I want to show you how to sharpen drill bits, twist bits, and masonry bits in a variety of materials, including carbide, on this machine. This is the Drill Doctor model XPK. We're also going to talk about its specs and features, so be sure to stay tuned and we'll get started. Now as we open up the box, and I'll try to fast forward a lot of this to make it go quicker, I will share some general information about this system with you. And I'll display a lot of that on the screen, so pay attention. Also you'll notice a dark spot in some of the video, and that's because my camera is going out on me. So we're researching a new camera now, hopefully this won't be a problem in the future, so bear with us. Now it's a really tight fit here, <laughs> and the display box wouldn't just drop out of the shipping box. So I ended up having to use my Stanley knife and I just cut it out. The unit is designed to sharpen twist drill bits, either as a standard or a split point, and it will also do masonry bits, and I'll show you how to sharpen all of these styles. It will also sharpen a variety of drill point materials, and I've listed those on the screen. Now it's not designed to sharpen, say, spade bits, Forstner bits, brad point bits. It won't sharpen your chisels or your knives. It comes completely assembled except there's a separate chuck and adjustment wrench. And of course there's always all the paperwork they put in it, including your manual, which is written entirely in English. Also on operating the machine, you want to make sure there were safety glasses and hearing protection is also a good idea. So let me find a drill bit to sharpen. Now this is a 3 8 inch drill bit and it is really dull. So what I want to do is see if it will cut through this galvanized material and this is just a conduit box. And then we're going to sharpen it and see how it does. So let's start it. you can see that not a lot we barely made a dimple on the surface with this bit so now I'm going to take it off and I'm going to sharpen it and we'll see what happens let's take a look at the machine before we sharpen our drill bit and we've got several things going on here now this is the actual sharpening port I don't know if you can see it but down the bottom is your diamond wheel and that does the actual sharpening now this is called an alignment port and what you're going to do is use your chuck and I'm going to put my drill bit through. You're going to open this up till you get it to the right size. This is what it looks like inside. You can see those jaws close and open according to the direction of the uh, turn. Before I sharpen the bit, I'm using a permanent marker to black out the shiny metal on the end. And this will allow us to see how even the sharpening actually is. Now I can insert the bit into the chuck, and of course I will have to spin the chuck open or closed enough until it fits. And you want it to be snug enough that the bit just won't fall out, and yet loose enough that you can still spin it inside the chuck. And also let the bit stick out about an inch from the end. Now here's a close-up of the adjustment board. And you'll notice there's a row of slots right here. And these are adjustment slots. And there's also, the middle is marked at 118 degrees. And what we're interested in for this demonstration is the exact center slot under the 118. Now you can experiment with these other slots, but for general twist bit cutting, we're going to use the center slot. Now on the chuck itself, You'll notice there's first a white dot, and you would think that would go there, but it doesn't. That you, You're going to use that dot when you actually sharpen with it. What we're interested in now is this raised rib right here, or fin, as they call it in the manual. Now that 
fin should fit in that center slot. So when you get your drill bit mounted up, you're going to mount it like so. Then you can use your jaws and your tightening feature, but that's how you dock it for optimal sharpening. Now you can push down the top button and line up your fin and insert it into the alignment port. Here's a close-up and notice how the jaws open up and I leave them open and push the bit forward until it touches the metal stop. And now you can release the jaws. Rotate the bit slowly until you feel it stop. What is going to happen is that those jaws are going to grab the bit at its narrowest point which is in the flute and that's exactly where it needs to be for proper sharpening. Now before removing the chuck, uh, tighten it enough to lock the bit into place. Then remove it and tighten it some more. Now the reason is we don't want to over tighten it in the adjustment port and damage the port. To actually sharpen it, uh, turn on the sharpener and then remember that white dot? You insert the chuck with the dot aligned with the cam pin. Now turn and push down gently and you should hear the bit engage the diamond wheel. Now the number of times you turn depends on the size of the bit. Larger bits get more turns and I turn this 3 8 inch bit about 20 times. You basically just keep turning until you don't hear that grinding noise anymore. And you can see that all of our black marks a lot is gone. Of course if your bit is not very dull it won't take near as many turns. You may have noticed that the chuck rocks back and forth as I'm turning it. Now, this is not just sloppy handling on my part, okay? There is actually a cam built into the chuck designed to make this action happen. It's part of the process. So, just go with it. So now let's try it out. So we'll chuck it back up. Okay, we're chucked up and ready to go. Remember, we just made a dimple before. So let's see what we have here. Okay, pick a new place. Can you see the shavings? And I'm not even using oil here. Look at that, what a difference. So what if you follow all the instructions perfectly and you're still just not happy with the quality or the speed of your cut? Well, you can go back to the adjustment port and these extra notches and adjust the relief angle of the drill bit, which should improve the cut quality. Now looking here at the adjustment report, remember we said that our normal cutting or sharpening uh, setting is 118 degrees, which is the center notch. Going to the left will increase the relief angle and give you a more aggressive cut. Going to the right will give you a less aggressive cut, but perhaps a more controlled cut. So now we can put our bit in our holder, and we're going to set this up just like we normally do for the other sharpened example. So we want to get it to where it stays in the chuck without falling out, and yet I want to be able to turn it. Now, I'm going to pretend that I want a more aggressive cut, so I'm going to move over to this notch. I'm going to add 10 degrees. So here we go. And of course, I'm going to push down my button and push my drill to the stop, and then I'm going to turn the bit till it locks in the ferrule. There we go. Now I can tighten my bit, or my chuck rather, tighten here. Now we can turn around and sharpen it as normal. And that's all there is to it. Now be sure to go one notch at a time when you do this because if you overdo it, you can actually ruin the quality of the cut of your drill bit. <laughs> It'll get to where it just won't work. <laughs> so go slow, be careful, and go a notch at a time until you get it just right. Now let's sharpen the masonry bit. And we won't even need to use the adjustment port for this. Now notice these two lines on the front of your chuck. Notice also the linear flute on top of your bit. What you do is you loosen your chuck and then set your bit 
and then you want to tighten until the chuck you know loosely holds the bit like we did before uh, then line up the bit flutes with the chuck marks they should all be in a line and then let your bit stick out about a half inch to five eighths inches from your chuck then tighten slightly now line up one of the white dots with the pin and insert it into the sharpening port and tighten the chuck now recheck uh, the position of your bit now you can turn on the machine and line up the white dot with the pin again and in this case you don't turn you plunge so we plunge it we lift and turn to the other white dot plunge again after we do this four five six uh, rotations uh, we'll check it and we we'll want to make sure that you plunge each side an equal number of times uh, now it seems short so I'm going to chuck it up and drill this concrete patio stone and as you can see from this mound of dust I think we've been successful on the side of the machine is this port this is your grit port and it's got a black plastic insert in it, as you can see. You'll also notice there's a series of holes here. Now this is a dual purpose insert. Uh, the first thing it does is to keep sparks from being thrown in the room. It's a safety device. The second thing is that you can hook up a one and a quarter inch vacuum hose adapter here. You can even leave it on your machine and as you sharpen, it's gonna keep the machine cleaner, of course. But this actually comes out and we take it out. You can see that baffle assembly there. And you have access to the side of your cutting wheel. The reason this is important is because when you sharpen a twist bit, you can just leave it in your holder after you finish sharpening it and use this port on the side of the machine to convert it into a split point bit. Now you'll notice in all of my videos that whenever I use a twist drill bit, I always tap a starter dimple with my hammer and punch or use a really small drill bit and drill a starter hole. And that's because invariably twist bits tend to wander when you try to drill with them. The split bit eliminates that problem and they also drill faster. But being old school, I will probably still do that dimple anyway. <laughs> Now before you split the point, you should sharpen your bit as you normally would and just leave it in the holder. And now you can remove the grit port insert on the side of the machine. I like to blacken out the top of the bit. Now this just makes it easier to see the new ridges that the machine will grind on the top. You'll line up the white mark on the chuck with the line at the top of the port. And as you push it in, the alignment fin should engage the slot at 9 o'clock on the port. Turn on the machine and push in the chuck until it engages the diamond wheel. Now this is strictly a plunging motion. The chuck cannot be turned or rotated uh, with it inserted in the machine. Now remove the chuck and rotate it until the opposite white line matches up and push it in. Now your bit will not cut well if you over grind it or under grind it. So be sure to go slow here inspect your bit after every pass and when your two ground lines barely touch in the middle then it should be perfect now if you over grind you'll need to resharpen your bit in the sharpening port on the top and start over again if the if the two lines don't meet well then you just need to run it a time or two through the machine again until you get them to work now this really seemed a bit tricky to me so i took an old bit and i practiced with it until i finally got this right and once you get the hang of it, it's a piece of cake. So now we can try it out uh, without the dimple. And uh, you can see the bit doesn't wander. And it should cut faster. This would have been faster in the drill press. But as you can see, I'm getting uh, plenty of metal shavings here. So it is cutting well. Also, if you don't like your results, there's some diagrams on pages 18 to 20 of your manual that will show you what your split end should look like. After you drew 20-25 drill bits, you really need to clean the machine. On the bottom is this clear plastic cover. It's actually like a little drawer cover. And they recommend you pull like this, but I can't get it to move. But on the bottom are these two nubs, and you can push them off with your thumbs. This is the best way to do it. Once open, you can see the inside of the machine. You can use a brush to clean out the inside of this port 
and also a soft rag. Now you can also use a vacuum hose and vacuum this out, a small one, but they don't recommend using compressed air. Say it may damage the machine. So here's your diamond wheel. Now if this diamond wheel wears unevenly, you can remove it and turn it around and get more life out of it. Or you can just replace the wheel. This is just a sleeve. And the little wrench that they supplied with the unit is actually used to take this off. And all it takes, a few turns with your Phillips screwdriver, this will come off, replace your sleeve, and put it back on. Just that easy. Well, folks, that concludes our video for today. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Hope it's helped you. If so, please go below and like our video. And since I've got more woodworking, DIY projects, and tool reviews coming, please go below and subscribe to our channel and ring that bell so you won't miss anything. And until next time, thanks for watching.